Hi, I'm Jessica Colby and welcome to Qigong. I am a teacher and I lead classes in Tai Chi and Qigong and also have workshops in the Santa Barbara area. I invite all of you to join me in a live class and if you mention that you saw this show, please come to a class and experience what the healing benefits of Qigong are with other people. The energy is just wonderful. Uh, you can find information about my classes and workshops on my website, which will be listed uh, on the screen periodically throughout this show. And um, please come and experience these wonderful healing benefits of uh, ancient Chinese healing techniques. Today I am really, really excited. I have a guest, my teacher, friend, and mentor, Dr. Roger Yanka, is here today. And he will be, we'll be talking together and we'll also be, uh, have a class that he will lead us through. So you'll be able to see exercises that he'll demonstrate. Um, Dr. Yanka is a doctor of oriental medicine and an acupuncturist, and he's the director and the founder of the Institute of Integral Tai Chi and Qigong, which is, um, excuse me, the Institute of Integral Qigong and Tai Chi, which is an organization that trains future Tai Chi and Qigong instructors. And I am a graduate of this program. And he has shared the benefits of these exercises with millions of people all over the world in workshops, retreat centers. He's been a keynote speaker at so many conferences. And I hope if you ever get a chance to study with him, that you would take advantage of that. And every now and then, he does lead workshops here in Santa Barbara. Um, he is a best-selling author. One of my favorite books is The Healer Within. And if you want to know more about Qigong, I recommend starting with this particular book. And another book that he has written is called The Healing Promise of Qi. This takes you through beautiful exercises and I love this book, and there's workshops that Roger, uh, that Roger leads on this, and I lead workshops on the, the exercises in this book. So um, I recommend both of these books if you're interested in learning more about Qigong. Dr. Yanka is considered an authority by many luminaries in the world, including Deepak Chopra, Thich Nhat Hanh, and many others, and he, he even serves as an advisor for the uh, center, the National Center of Aging, um, and probably others I'll let him tell you about. Uh, he's been to China nine times studying Tai Chi and Qigong, and I was lucky enough to be with him last year, and uh, we had 33 teachers studying uh, from masters in China. So he's an inspiration to me and so many other people, and um, his quest to share Tai Chi and Qigong with the world uh, and to activate our own healing energies that are within ourselves is something that I aspire to uh, and join him with. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Roger Yanka. Roger, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. I'm so happy to have you here. What, what a pleasure. And, and I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, the level of enthusiasm that you have for these things. You know, clearly you sort of got the vision and now you have your TV show <laughs> and, and this is reaching out to people that, you know, wouldn't have the uh, opportunity to be able to access these things otherwise, which is exactly what we're, you know, intent upon is to have, well, everybody, you know, like everybody in the world, uh, understand how, well, how powerful they are. And, and so um, one of the ways to do that is to have these kinds of experiences, experience the benefits, and then get excited and share with others, just like you're doing. Mm, thank you. Well, it's, it's my mission, like your mission, is to get it out there and to, for people who are stuck at home or can't get out of a bed or a chair, these exercises can work for people that... It, whether you're, you can stand up, sit down, or lie down, we do these exercises. <laughs> so thank you for inspiring mm. me so much. And um, you mentioned uh, activating our own healer within. And what can you talk a little bit about what that means and how it, it can affect the greater populace? Sure, sure. So level one, 
is that uh, the humans, the human race, uh, has survived all kinds of um, stresses and traumas. And um, there's a natural capacity within us that has always been there. It's always in every person that keeps us well for as long as we are. So then we could ask the question, do we become unwell because of something out there, or, or do we become unwell because we don't understand how to take care of what's in here? And there's two answers, because you know car accidents are out there, and um, you know uh, microbes are out there, and so forth. But the immune system is in here. And so the capacity to you know, uh, resist even external assaults or chronic degenerative diseases it's all managed within the human system if we use the human system wisely. And so then next level is that we, as humans, we're very inventive. And so we've invented a few drugs and so forth that uh, seem to be sort of like the answer to everything. And then, of course, later it turns out that they were the answer to something, sometimes temporarily, and sometimes with some negative consequences. And so we kind of have to dial back from the idea that, so shall we say, pharmaceutical or, or, or medical intervention is the, the best strategy. So now come to present time, well, we now know that a um, huge percentage of all disease, like 75, 85, you know, there's arguments about these numbers, but a large number of diseases are preventable. And these diseases are preventable through behavioral activities that people do at home for no cost, including Qigong and Tai Chi. And so then just one more thing is the, so, you know, they say like, follow the money. And so the money is that if we spend two or three trillion dollars every year treating preventable diseases, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you treat a preventable disease? Mm. So if 70%, 80%, 90% of all disease is preventable, then you do like a little math, and um, if it's two trillion, then a trillion and a half could be saved every year just by preventing preventable diseases, and if it's three trillion, <clears throat> it's over two trillion dollars that could be saved every year. We could build highways, bridges, restart the space program, put art and other uh, cultural activities back into schools. So this is not only just an amazing potential for self-maximization, but every person who takes care of themselves and prevents a preventable disease is actually contributing to this society and in fact is a kind of patriot in mm. my book. Mm. And we'd all feel better. Oh, and the feel better part. <laughs> we wouldn't be sick, or as sick. And yeah, the, the simple exercises, uh, are, anybody can do them. Anybody, it's, it's not, anybody can do them. It's not magic. It's, yep. I've you know, been through your program and as simple as meditating and self-applied massage. And taking a deep breath now and then. Ah, oh, I like that idea. <laughs> mm. I frequently ask uh, my uh, viewers to take a, t a long, deep breath. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, everybody take a long, deep breath. Ah, I like that. <sighs> Sighs of relief are way underrated. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been a doctor of oriental medicine for 40 years. And what... So what are you excited about now, and how do you, what's your vision of the, hmm. in the future? Right, 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 right. Well, it's interesting because from the very beginning of my experience in um, uh, being exposed to uh, Asian philosophies and um, training as a doctor and so forth, the vision has always been the same. And in Chinese medicine, like in the Western world, we say the first rule in medicine do no harm. And I think, oh, you know, can harm be done mm. by a doctor, you know, someone who's mm -hmm. going to help us. And, and so the first rule in Chinese medicine is first, honor the eternal aspect of the person. So we're not even talking about the body. Mm. We're talking about the spiritual component of our being. Second rule in Chinese medicine is to 
teach people to sustain their well-being rather than treating them after they've lost their well-being. And then the third rule, and notice we're already two rules in, there's nothing about treatment, it's all about learning and honoring. And then the third rule is uh, treat people while they're well to keep them well. And, and so that vision is uh, for, um, for, for any person or any doctor or any society is profound. And, and so to, to me, the concept today is the same as it was, you know, 40 years ago, which is um, uh, the human being has a powerful energetic system that that energetic system drives the function of the organs and um, that we can learn to manage both the energetics and the organic aspect of ourselves to maximize function. And so used to be when we had conversations with people about those, it'd be like, well, what are you talking about? But, but now it's, it's actually a part of the culture. And the first wave of wellness, which happened back in the 70s, kind of flopped. But the next wave of wellness has got all sorts of information about the, uh, the money that we can save, uh, the, the money that businesses can save by supporting their uh, uh, employees and being more well. There's actually politics involved now, and there are, there are policies that, that give um, tax incentives to organizations who have um, highly uh, functional wellness programs. And of course, the easiest kind of wellness program in the world is one that people can do on their own without a lot of complexity, no particular necessary uh, extra equipment or place to be, so you don't have to go to the gym. Oh, I love this line, the worst thing about going to the gym is going to the gym. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. hilarious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, can, what, what can we do at home? What can we do in the space around our house? What can we do in the park nearby? Mm -hmm. Well, qigong and tai chi. And, and I would just add that as this is coming into the, shall we say, institutional consciousness, then organizations like the AARP and the National Council on Aging and the um, school systems and the social service agencies and, and the military and the Veterans Administration, all of these organizations are getting involved. And we've trained people in every one of those. We've trained golf pros, we've trained bank executives, we've, we've trained psychotherapists and doctors and lawyers. We have a, trained a whole bunch of lawyers. Imagine that. Lawyers who want to become Qigong and Tai Chi teachers. Mm. Librarians, for whatever reason, we have trained a whole bunch <laughs> of librarians. So this is just pervasive. And I would say the, the vision is the same. It's just, let's keep going. You know, let's see what really happens when, and, and people would say, oh, you know, you can't do that in uh, healthcare politics. You shouldn't do that. Well, that's all, um, you know, what we would call party politics. Because when you dig down in there, it is the, one of the most patriotic things that people can do, take care of themselves, and that then contributes money back into the system which is, uh, supports us as a society in fulfilling our dreams. So now instead of treating diseases that don't even need treatment, we can actually have a society, I mean, here's the big vision, we can have a society that can actually pursue its dreams of creativity, and uh, family functionality. And you know, the worst thing, the most depressing thing is that um, <clears throat> there's a st statistic that says that 80% of medical expenses happen in the last two years of a person's life. And so what happens is that we have this system that just sucks the money out of families. Mm. And it's, it's a crime and a tragedy. And I'm a patriot. Well, thank you. And I know because of you, there's many more Tai Chi and Qigong instructors. Indeed, thousands. And I'm familiar with a foundation that you started. Mm. Uh, it's called the Healer Within Foundation. And it's my understanding that you want to bring Tai Chi to the underserved populations. Absolutely. Uh, for little or no cost. And we are doing that. And this, because we want to you know, jump to our practice session and our class here, I'll just say, that if people would take a look at the Healer Within Foundation website, which uh, should show up on occasion on the, um, 
on the lower third of the screen. Uh, the other thing that I can say is um, that the people who make the contributions to the Healer Within Foundation are basically paying to train people who will actually go to, into service for uh, people who have those chronic diseases who are not, uh, who can't afford to be able to pay for their health care or, and you know, and they don't even know about how powerful they are. Drug and alcohol, family violence, prison systems, um, all of these things are, are the, the worst impact on the health care system is, is, the, is the least enabled citizens in our society. And so we feel at the Healer Within Foundation that it is very important to, uh, you know, activate the, uh, the people who are able and um, can afford these things. But it's very, very important to activate and empower those who would otherwise not even know about these amazing and simple and accessible practices. Well, thank you for all the good work that you do. Mm. I love your vision. I share it. Mm. I, you and I can talk for hours at a time, <laughs> which we do frequently. But I would love it if you would show yes. the audience some of the exercises. Well, let's practice, let's practice together. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So let's get started. And if you're watching uh, seated, you can do this seated. And Jessica's here to uh, play along. And if you're seated and you're thinking about just watching, you might want to reconsider that. And if you'd rather actually do this uh, because you can stand and would like to take the advantage of the practice, then join us standing. So we'll start by feet fairly together. And if you're sitting, you would put your feet a little bit apart. And, uh, and then we do what we call opening. <clears throat> well, first, we'll do what we call aligning. So think to yourself about the uh, sky above you, the earth below you, and yourself in between. That is the big sky. I'm, I'm refer referencing, you know, the universe, the cosmos, and then the solid ground below you and yourself in between. And see that as a big picture with yourself tiny in the middle. A lot of power. The earth is a magnet. The sky is full of all sorts of magnetic resources. The energy, the life force, the chi. Begin to relax. And now we'll go to what we call three treasures. Three treasures are body focus, breath focus, mind focus. So let's focus on the body. Sink down and raise up. So lift your top part of your body. Sink down into your knees and see if you can make more space in your torso. Sink down, raise up equals more space. Maybe it's not a lot, but um, probably more than there was before. Then your shoulders are relaxed, your head is on top, and allow yourself to just drift a little bit. Drifting means don't hang on too much to a static posture. You may actually feel yourself under the influence of the energy of the earth and the sky. Second, intentful point of focus, your breath. So first notice the breath, and any time during your day or your week that you notice the breath, you've done yourself a real favor, then deepen your breath. So first notice to see how panicked you are, <laughs> and then deepen your breath. Deep and slow and relax the breathing throughout this practice. Now third, intentful point of focus, your mind, your consciousness, your awareness. And bring your awareness in from everything that's going on and focus on what's happening here and now. These three treasures, when we do these three, 
no matter where we are or what we're doing. Focus on the body, lengthen, open. Focus on the breath, deepen and relax. Focus on the mind, pay attention to what's happening now. That is a magic formula for making medicine within your own body. So we're already doing it, making healing resources, turning on healing capacity within our own being. Then we open, and open means shift your weight to one side, either side, and then step out and put some space between your right and left foot, about the width of your shoulders, and sink down and align yourself again. Big deep breath, and let's start with what's called flowing motion. Raise your hands, and you could breathe in or you could breathe out here, and then turn your palms down and allow your hands to come drifting down. When your hands pass the center of the body, then turn your palms forward and raise them again. Big deep breath, in or out. So the combination of paying attention to the body, the paying attention to the breath, and regulating them purposefully, and then holding the focus on the present moment. That's the power of Qigong and Tai Chi and all the mind-body practices. Now, lift your heels. If you're sitting, same, lift your heels. Sink down. As your hands pass the center line, lift your toes. Keep the ball of the feet on the ground. Again, raise your heels. And sink down and raise your toes. Now, these practices are used in falls prevention programs or balance enhancement programs but also in every kind of disease prevention strategy. Deep and relaxed, going deeper into relaxation. Big full breaths. You can go a little slower or a little faster, and let's do one more. And then bring your hands down slowly and rest. Big deep breath. Bring a, a feeling of, um, you know, gladness and appreciation. Now, maybe you're stressed in your life and maybe you're not that glad. But for now, just for now, try it. Think about every part of yourself being more expanded and more restful and more appreciative. Big deep breath. So we go for a while, we do the movement for a while, then we stop for a little while. That's a balance of going and stopping. It helps for us as humans to have the experience of stopping. So feel, turn your attention inward, see if you're going to resist the idea of, but wait a minute, we got to keep going. It isn't an exercise if we don't keep going. Anyway, I have too many things to do. I just can't sit here or stand here. See if you can resist that and instead turn your attention inward and just continue to relax. Use the breath. And you will begin to feel something changing within you. And that's the feeling of the medicine. We make medicine within ourselves all day, every day, for our whole life, until our lives are over. 
if we neglect that, then we will not be as well. So why not make medicine? Let's keep going. So turn your palms to face you at about the level of your belly. And raise your hands up, breathe in. When your hands get to about the level of your face, turn your hands away and look up and think about that sky. Then exhale and bring your hands down and make fists and press your fists together and face down. Breathe in, raise up, relax, open your hands, soften your fingers, turn your palms to the sky, the big sky, the cosmic sky. Exhaling, make fists, press your fists together, and face the ground. The ground and the sky are like these amazing opposing forces. Breathe in, raise up, go at your own pace, continue to go deeper and deeper into relaxation. Think openness of sky, think heaven, think boundlessness, and then think ground like source of gravity, source of food, source of water, raise up. Bigger people with bigger lungs go slower. And smaller people go a little faster. And go at your own pace. Now this time, contract press your fists together, but also make a funny face, contract your face and contract your feet. Grip the floor, then relax and breathe in. So we're alternating, relaxing and contracting. We're alternating, facing the sky and facing the earth. Contract your fists, your face, your feet. Add one more, contract the muscle in your pelvis called the perineum. Contract, it's the one, and then keep going. It's the one that you would use to curtail the urine stream. Big inhalations, deeply relaxing. Contracting exhale, contract fists, face, feet, perineum. Anything else that you can find to contract, contract it. Deep and slow and relax the breathing at a pace that's comfortable for you. And let's do two more. Here comes contraction one. And then one more, breathe in, relax. And here comes contraction two. Now contract everything with force, even beyond what we just said. All the parts, find anything that's relaxed and contract it. And then to conclude, sit up straight, Stand up straight, breathe in, open your hands in front of you. And then turn your hands down and big, long exhalation. And then rest there. Now let's check the three intentful points of focus. Posture, lengthen. Breath, deep. Although we've been taking deep breaths, so maybe you would want to just breathe normally for a while. And mind focus. How are you doing at sustaining the focus on what we're doing now? Now, if you start to feel like a little panicky about the fact that you don't have time to do this, 
then think to yourself, do I have time to sit in a clinic waiting for uh, someone to give me a medicine that I don't even need to take? Wouldn't it make some kind of sense to do the time that you would do there? Got to go across town. Maybe you got to even ride a bus. Why not take this time, make medicine here? And so while you're there, lengthening and sinking and relaxing deeply and using the breath and focusing on what's happening now, turn your attention inward. Notice what you're feeling. Continue to take a deep breath now and then. You may feel a sense of restfulness. You may feel something flowing inside. Well, why wouldn't you? After all, you have blood flowing, lymph flowing, neurological uh, impulses flowing, chi energy, life force flowing. A lot is flowing. So what would happen if we paid such close attention that we could actually feel the body functioning? Just drift there for a moment. Now, when we do that, uh, relax, the contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing, and contracting and relaxing, you're circulating these healing resources. You're pumping the lymphatic system. You are relaxing the blood system so that it actually carries more oxygen and nutrition to the cells. It, it's a miracle. It's, it's like a miracle. And, and yet we don't even know about it. Most people don't even know how powerful they are. It's tragedy. You know, we have an opportunity to maximize our well-being. Wow! For no cost. Make medicine within the human body for no cost. Solve the health cost crisis. No cost. At home. For free. Amazing. So. We're actually practicing today from what we call the four baskets of practice. So we just did the movement basket, and then we're going to do the massage basket, self-applied massage, then we're going to do the breath basket, and then we're going to have a meditation to conclude. And so think to yourself, that movement, that was fairly easy. Um, would I ever do that again? I hope so or any other very gentle movement that you can do pretty much in the same way. Think about going to a Tai Chi or Qigong class. Think about coming to Jessica's Tai Chi and Qigong class. So let's go on to the massage now. <clears throat> now most people say, oh man, do I need a massage on my neck? So let's start with that. First one, with either hand, go across the center of the body and reach up to your shoulder and find the sorest spot. Did you notice there's a sorest spot there? It's fairly easy to find. It's present on all people. It's in a powerful acupuncture point, which is widely used in clinical Chinese medicine. Move this arm around. So while you're rubbing the point on this side, move your body and you may, and move your head and your neck, your head, your neck, your shoulder, lift your shoulder, drop your shoulder, move your, head, your arm around, move your rib cage, uh, anything that you can do to get the whole body involved. And you may feel like some little clicking in your neck and that's probably a good thing. Don't forget to take a deep breath now and then. Now, if you want to reach further back, you put your hand under your elbow and reach back even further. So, oh, yeah, that's another one of my sore spots, you might be saying. And you're probably saying, gee, I had no idea I could actually mas apply massage to myself. That is a, also a miracle, because after all, I'm, I don't know if you've noticed, but Often you'd say to yourself, gee, I wish I had a massage, and then you think, I don't have time, I can't afford it, you know, all that stuff. Ah, oh, other side. 
So when you get a massage from someone else, you definitely want to just lie there, get your money's worth, and so forth. But when you're giving a massage to yourself, think to yourself, you know, do I really want to linger here a long time? No, I want to get the job done. I want to resist that headache or neutralize that headache or get my second wind. Don't forget to take a deep breath now and then. Don't forget to move your body around. Don't forget to lift your shoulder and drop your shoulder. Don't forget to move the arm that you're working on around. Don't forget to move your ribs. How can you move your ribs? Well, bend your spine this way and bend your spine that way and take a deep breath and let that deep breath out slowly and um, enjoy that massage that you've been wanting. Okay, now, because we're limited on time, we're going to do this fairly briefly. So, you typically, you wouldn't just stop there. You'd keep going. But for now, we're going to keep going. Next thing for your neck is that you take one hand, either hand, and put it through to the other side. Notice my hand is coming through over here. I'm going to turn my head and face in that same direction. So I'm going to face my head over there where my hand is coming through. Now, grab your neck, grab my neck, sink down, lengthen, and then pull with your arm this way, but pull with your head this way. So it won't look like you're really pulling, but you are, you're pulling with force both ways at the same time. Now turn your head and curl your fingers so they kind of dig in a little bit. And think to yourself, how does that feel? And maybe you don't quite get it right away, so you got to do it a few times. We learn how to do these things by doing these things. The worst idea is to think that you shouldn't be doing these things or you don't know how to do these things. I mean, after all, you've got fingers, you can curl your fingers. You have an elbow, which makes it entirely possible for you to reach behind yourself like this. You have the capacity to pull this way and this way. So keep doing it until you feel like, ooh, that was, that was a good one. And then we'll go to the other side. Don't forget to take a deep breath now and then. Don't forget to sink down, raise up. Don't forget to turn your head. The combination of pulling this way, pulling your head this way, curling your fingers, and turning your head. That's the magic combination. You can't learn it in a class. You already have all the information you need. The next thing is to refine this so that it feels right for you. Big deep breath. See if you can focus on what's happening now. Resist the idea that you have too much to do to spend this time on yourself. Now, which side felt better? The first one or the second one? Whichever one felt better, do it a couple more times. Nice deep breath. Clear your mind. See if you can focus on what's happening now. Just think to yourself, oh yes, that feels so good. Why wouldn't I do this all the time, you might say to yourself. You know, you could say like, well, what's wrong with us that we didn't, we learn these things in school or from our coach as an athlete or from our grandma or somebody. Okay, then stop. Now, one more. Press on the side with your fingers on both sides and find the sore spot. So on the, under your ear, on one side, press, 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 find what we call the lumpiest, grumpiest, sorest spot. And for me, right side, lumpiest, grumpiest, sorest spot is down lower. 
it, it, it's almost uh, guaranteed that it won't be the same spot on both sides. Then, other side, pressing, 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 pressing. Find the second, the lumpiest, grumpiest sore spot on the other side. Then, push in. You're not on the back of your neck, you're not on the front of your neck, you're on the side of your neck. Press in with force. And then move your whole body. So move your whole body around. So you're uh, moving your head around. Lift your shoulders and drop your shoulders. Move your ribs. Don't forget to take a deep breath now and then. And see if you can or imagine that your hips are moving, it's the whole body moving. So involve as much as yourself, shift your weight from side to side, move your hips, move your ribs, all of this all of, the, all of the parts down below are a part of why those points are so lumpy and grumpy. And then stop and allow your hands to come drifting down. Now, just as a reminder, we're, we're not going to do this, but you can also rub your ears, like vigorously, rub, rub, rub your ears, your hands, Rub, rub, rub your hands. Thumb, rub, rub, rub your hands. Uh, you know, the instructions for all of this are in that little uh, green book, The Healer Within. Then also you can rub your feet. The ears, the hands, and the feet are all associated with your whole self. So you can give yourself a total body massage by doing your ears, hands, and feet. Okay, so... Just sink down now and r resume with the whole idea of focusing on the present moment. Big deep breath, lengthen yourself. So we did the movement basket of practices, Qigong practices. We did the uh, self-applied massage portion that we can do for today. Now, there are many, many, many kinds of massage, and there are many, many kinds of movements that we did not do. Third is the breath. So, assuming that you've done this before, but then assuming that maybe you haven't done it lately, let's remind ourselves that a big deep breath has a belly portion and a chest portion. So, place your hand on your belly and breathe in so that your belly expands. That's the first part. Then, place your hand on your chest, breathe in, into your chest. That's the second part. And then exhale very slowly. And then breathe in again, belly first, chest second. Exhale slowly. Breathe in two times, belly, chest. Exhale slowly. Now keep your hands there if you wish, or place your second hand down on your belly, or put your hands in your lap if you're sitting, or whatever you would like to do. And we're gonna continue with this with a, a little addition, which is breathe in belly, Breathe in chest, hold, and then exhale slowly. So I'm gonna put my hands here, but if you like the idea of being able to touch your belly and your chest at the same time, do it. Or if you'd be more comfortable with your hands anywhere else, it's, it's your choice. It's a breath practice. You can tailor it for yourself. Okay, belly breath, chest breath. Now hold, one, like two or three or four. Okay, now slowly re release your breath, slowly, very slowly through your nose. Unless it's uncomfortable, then use your mouth. 
Now we'll do it again. Breathe in, belly, chest. Hold one, two, three, four, you know, longer if you want to, then very slowly out through the nose. Notice what you're feeling because this we you may feel the medicine being circulated more right now. This is one of the best practices to feel the effect of your shift in function. And just breathe normally for a moment. Next big deep breath. Big one. Hold. Exhale very slowly through your nose. We're going to do one more. Notice what you're feeling. You might feel just Breathe normally now for a moment. You might feel like you're a little uh, drunk, you know, like you just had a glass of uh, wine or something like that. Notice, turn your attention inward. Be vigilant now. This is like such an important moment. If you can feel the function of yourself moving in the direction of well-being, you may get a taste of how powerful you are. Let's do it one more time. Belly breath, chest breath, hold, and then very slowly from the nose. Breathe normally. Notice what you're feeling. Now, for those of us who do this on a regular basis, we're probably feeling sometimes what we say high on healing. Oh, feeling high on healing. <laughs> Write that down. So feel that feeling. Notice what it feels like. See if you can make it happen again and again in your life. Okay, next breath practice goes like this. Turn your palms up. We can do this really slowly. It goes like this. Two breaths, belly, chest. Turn your palms down. Exhale slowly. Now we've just been doing slow breathing. And we're going to quickly migrate. Uh, we'll do this one more time. Belly, chest. Now let's go faster. Faster. If you're standing, sink down, raise up. Faster. Five more. Four more, three more, two more, last one, and stop. Turn your attention inward. Notice what you're feeling. Whoa, yes, like that. That's it. That's the power that you have in your life to maximize your own well being. And just rest in that knowing for a moment. Think to say it to yourself, my power to heal myself for free. Now, why wouldn't I be dosing on this medicine all day, every day? If I'm not well, you know, if you're can't get up and around and you want to be more well, then sit in your chair like Jessica's doing and do these practices. Maximize your capacity. Turn yourself around. We have met thousands of people who've done this. And 
It's very inspiring. Okay, fourth basket of practice is meditation, mindfulness, turning your attention inward. So make yourself comfortable. If you've been standing, you know, you might want to move yourself around a little bit. Adjust your feet, wiggle your feet, wiggle your, uh, wiggle your fingers. I would do a very brief meditation. Sink down, align yourself between heaven and earth. Think big heaven, big sky, m you know, endless, boundless sky solid earth and myself in between. The sky is representative of the aspect of myself that's not solid. My imagination, and my intelligence. The earth is representative of the aspect of myself which is solid. My bones, my skin, my blood. Notice how you are made up of earth and sky. It's amazing. The humans figured this out a really long time ago. So turn your, turn your attention to that. Then, can you continue to use the breath. Deepen your breath whenever you wish. We're going to be quiet for about 30 or 40 seconds. Deep breaths. Lengthen your posture. Sink down. Place your hands someplace comfortable. Now, you probably feel like, wow, we should stay there for a while. And you could. You can. But for here, for now, celebrate for just one more moment the power within you. And then we're going to close. Closing means shift your weight to one side. If you're sitting, just gather from around you. Step your feet together. Now let's make a bow. Jessica and Roger bow to each other. Mm. Let's do a quick hug. Thank you, Jessica. That was very much fun. Thank Many you, blessings Roger. to you. Many blessings to you. Thank you for joining us. Please visit Roger's websites for DVDs and books, and please be well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Bye now.